Hello, my name is Caroline Dunn, and this video is the first in a four-part series on a plant watering system with soil moisture monitoring. If you are a regular on my channel, you already know that I produce weekly tech videos on Raspberry Pi, IoT, Smart Home, and voice assistance. I previously posted a video where I combined an Arduino Uno or Raspberry Pi and a capacitive moisture sensor to automatically water my bonsai tree. In this series, I am improving on that project, replacing the Arduino Uno and the Raspberry Pi with this ESP8266. If you're wondering what an ESP8266 is, it is an Arduino development board. It uses the same Arduino IDE as my Arduino Uno. If you're familiar with the Arduino IDE, you'll be right at home. If you're not familiar, no worries. This video, I will show you step-by-step -step how to download Arduino IDE for free, set up your ESP8266, and hook up your soil moisture sensor. In the next video, we'll set up an automated email to report soil moisture levels at regular intervals. After that, I'll post video number three, which is actually my favorite part. I'll set up a public website that graphs the soil moisture level. And last but not least, I'll add the pump and relay that automatically waters my plant in the fourth video. Now let's get started. I just mentioned that I'm using this ESP8266 in place of my Raspberry Pi and Arduino Uno combo from my previous video on IoT plant watering. Why am I doing that? Better yet, why did I use a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino Uno in the first place? There are so many ways to go about automating plant watering. Originally, I wanted this to be a Raspberry Pi project, but the soil moisture sensor I am using, this one, is an analog device and the Raspberry Pi doesn't have an analog input. This could have been easily solved with an analog to digital converter, but of course I didn't have one and I wanted to use what I had on hand. My Arduino Uno didn't have Wi-Fi connectivity, so I couldn't remotely monitor the soil moisture level without the Raspberry Pi. The ESP8266 has Wi-Fi capability and one analog input, essentially bringing the pieces together that I need for this plant watering project at a fraction of the cost. To give you an idea of prices, a Raspberry Pi Zero is $10. This one is about $45, plus the power cable for $5 to $10, plus the Arduino Uno for about $5. I bought this ESP8266 for $5 on Amazon and I can power it from a micro USB cable connected to a power bank charger. I could have bought a set of three of these things for about $12. I bring that up because I had a question on my previous video about watering 20 plants. There are volume discounts when it comes to the ESP8266. And that brings me to the materials that you'll need for this project. You'll need your Windows or Mac computer, an ESP8266, a capacitive soil moisture sensor, three female to male jumper wires, a micro USB cable with data capability, some sort of power supply. I'm using a power bank charger since my plant is an outdoor plant. I'll link in the description field below to all of the items I used in my project. You'll also need a cup of water for the demo. Please be careful not to spill it on your electronics. On second thought, a towel might also be a good idea to have on hand for this project. Let's start with the setup. I have my soil moisture level sensor here. We are going to hook up three male to female wires to it. So I'll start with ground, that's the black wire, and I'll hook up ground. And then let's go with the middle one is VCC, that's power. And then the last one is the um, signal, which is A out. This is the analog signal. On my ESP8266, I am going to hook up the signal wire, the analog output, to the analog output of the ESP8266. If the USB connection is here, then the A0 or analog input from your capacitive soil moisture sensor should be the top one on the left. 
And then now we need ground and power. Ground, power, and the analog input on my ESP8266. I've got this micro USB. Didn't come with it, but um, they're really common if you have a cell phone. I'll just plug in the micro USB end here, and then the USB end I'll just plug into an available port on my computer. Now I've started a screen record on my computer. Now starting from scratch, from the very, very beginning, you do need to have Arduino IDE downloaded onto your computer. It is an app just like any other application you would download to your computer. Uh, so here we are. I'm at Arduino.cc main software. All I had to do to get here was type in Arduino.cc. And from here, there's a drop down for software. I just moused over the software drop down and I clicked on downloads on my computer. And there we go. I'm not going to do the web editor. It's a little bit limited as to which chipsets development boards that it supports. So I'm just going to scroll down and download the Arduino IDE. So if you have a Windows computer, select the appropriate Windows device that you own. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to select Mac OS. And then you can contribute and download, or you can just download. And it is a installation package, just like every other app that you have installed on your computer. I'm not going to go over that today, just because I already have Arduino IDE installed on this computer. Let's fire up the Arduino IDE so you can see that. And here is the out-of-box experience for the Arduino IDE. And uh, yeah, it gives you a blank sketch. All right, cool, awesome. The next thing you're going to need to do is go over to my GitHub page. I have uploaded all of the different files that I'm using for all four parts already onto my GitHub page, Plant Management ESP8266. So we'll just go over to, and I will link to this below, we'll just go over code and we're just going to download the zip file. And then let's open up the zip file and... Uh, here are the files uh, that we need for this project. And I'm just going to drag this over to my desktop just to make it easy on myself. All right, so uh, desktop, and we are going to start with number one, uh, capacitive moisture sensor and capacitive moisture sensor .ino. That's the file that we're going to open in the Arduino IDE. I'm going to go ahead and open it right now. And then I'm going to close out that default Arduino IDE that automatically came out. Close everything out, and here is our initial file, and all it's going to do is read from the sensor. Now, before we go forward, there's one more thing we got to do. We need to install this development board, the ESP8266, onto our Arduino. So out of the box, it does not support an ESP8266. You're going to have to install that yourself. All right, how are we going to do that? What we are going to do, I am following a tutorial from Random Nerd Tutorials called How to Install an ESP8266 board on Arduino IDE. I will link to it below, and they do have a video tutorial. This is very, very detailed. To install your ESP8266 on Arduino IDE, we go to File Preferences, and then we want to enter this into the additional board's URL. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go over to my Arduino. It actually goes Arduino Preferences if you're on a MacBook. And then Arduino Additional Board Managers URLs. Mine is already here because I've already done it, but essentially you just need to copy and paste this into your settings and hit OK. And now you're going to the Boards Manager, uh, Tools, Board, Boards Manager. All right, so we're going to search for ESP 8266, and here it is. Mine is already installed, uh, but if yours is not installed, then you'll have to hit install. All right, so mine is already installed. Excellent. And now we just need to test the installation. All right, so we've got this, and we have our ESP8266 USB connected to our computer, and then we've got the ESP8266 connected to our capacitive soil moisture sensor. So now after we do that, we'll go to Tools, we'll go to Boards, and then there should be an option for ESP8266 boards, and you'll select Node MCU 1.0 ESP-12E module. Select that module. Now let's go back to Tools again, and yeah, there's all, all sorts of things now that come up. Now let's make sure we've got the port right, and we want to make sure that it is connected. So if you see just Bluetooth incoming port, that's not correct. I'm going to unplug 
my ESP8266, replug it back in, and see if it kind of finds it. So sometimes it takes me a couple of tries to get the port working properly so that I know that my ESP8266 is actually connected to my computer. And there it goes. Now I can see that it is a USB to UART connection, so it automatically found it once I plugged it in. Now we're going to write this little piece of code, which is the moisture sensor code, uh, and then we can just locally see the moisture level of my capacitive soil moisture on my screen here after we do this. So I'm going to hit the upload button. It's going to compile the sketch and then upload it to my little ESP8266. All right, excellent. The code has been written. It is resetting now. Excellent. All right, so that's a success right there. So how do we see the moisture level now? That's a great question. If you notice here, serial begin 115200. All right, so we're going to go Tools, Serial, Monitor, and you'll see uh, you have to set your baud rate. So it may or may not default to 115 to 200 baud, okay? And now it's giving me a moisture level reading of negative 18, all right? So now I'm going to stick it in my water and see if we get a different level. So now it says 38%. Wow. Okay, so if you actually, if you actually take it out partially out of the water, it's actually... Um, you'll get different levels. So this is really fun to play with, just in an initial setup. This is part one, this is the first video, and I am just showing you a demo of getting this working, getting this set up. But what if I need to disconnect the ESP8266 from my computer? Great question. In next week's video, I'll show you how to set up automated email notifications with your soil moisture sensor. And the week after that, I'll set up a public website where anyone can view your plant's current soil moisture level. Stay tuned for part two by subscribing to my channel and turning on notifications. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.